I ended up with a remarkably dry basement in this mountain cabin. This video shows why I think the basement stays so dry. The concrete basement walls are about nine feet tall, backfilled to about seven foot deep on the uphill side. The exterior wall prep started by snapping off the ends of the metal snap ties that the cement contractor left behind. The ties are designed to break off below the surface of the concrete, leaving divots that can be sealed with a patch slurry. I wore a respirator designed for toxic vapors, that's not a dust mask, rubber irrigation boots, coveralls, a rain hat, and goggles to acid etch the concrete walls with a cheap industrial grade hydrochloric acid sometimes called muriatic acid. The tools that I used were a pump sprayer for the acid, a wire brush for scrubbing the walls, and a garden hose for rinsing off the acid. The idea is to remove the outer glaze off of the cement walls, leaving them more porous. After rinsing the deglazed walls, I soak them good for the next step, brushing on a Portland cement slurry. I happen to use a product called Zypex, X-Y-P-E-X. -E There's a lot of these integral crystalline systems on the market. Manufacturers say that the fine powder slurry penetrates wet concrete, especially new concrete forming dendritic crystals that grow in and fill the microscopic cracks. They claim that the crystal growth penetrates concrete several inches deep. These products are used to seal concrete water tanks, underground bridge supports, etc. The Zypex left a finish reminiscent of kiln-fired ceramic glazing when I was a young carpenter, my boss had me seal the exteriors of our new basement walls with asphalt tar. Over time, I've seen the tar crack and peel. I have more confidence in these integral crystalline systems. I laid a French drain around all of the footings and placed another layer of French drain about 18 inches below grade on the uphill end of the foundation. The uphill end of the basement was up to seven foot deep in earth. I wanted to divert rain and snow melt seeping down before it could moisten the entire seven foot wall to earth contract. The French drain is perforated four inch pipe with a full length sock covered with three inch river gravel. The gravel is covered with a filter cloth then backfilled. The sock and filter cloth are to prevent sand from clogging the pipe. All pipe was laid at a slope of about a quarter inch per foot. The drain pipe pokes out of the hillside down below the cabin. The terminal ends of the pipe are covered with a rodent proof screen. The sealed basement was also wrapped with a plastic dimpled membrane around the uphill side of the walls. I went with the dimpled membrane rather than a flat plastic sheeting because I like the idea of having an airspace between the concrete and the plastic. I tacked the top of the sheets up with screws and backfilled. The upper and lower drain pipes were connected with 45 degree T's. My primary goal in the backfill and grade work was to slope the earth away from the building. Even the parking area on the uphill side slopes down towards the truck in this picture. The cabin's long eaves and porch roofs also help shed water away from the building. 
I suspect that the landscaping and the roofs do the most to divert water. I've never seen a drop of water come out of the French drain discharge pipes down the hillside. The drains may have been overkill, but the materials were inexpensive and I like knowing that they're there. I monitored the interior of the walls closely before I insulated. No signs of moisture. I roughed in a roomy utility room uh, along the uphill side of the basement. The room gets a lot of water activity. The room has a sink, a toilet, wash machine, and it is used uh, to drain the water out of the building for winterization. I hang wa wet laundry in the room and flood the floor some when I drain the water system. I also shower myself with a hose over the floor drain. It all dries out shortly, including the unsealed concrete floor. The passive air basement vents also help. The French drains, crystalline wall sealer, dimpled membranes, long roof eaves, and landscaping all contribute to the very comfortable and functional basement. I call the basement my man cave and I use it for shelter while I do the finish work upstairs.